What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Week 12 here in the SFL. And let me just apologize if my face looks weird or if I sound weird. I just had some dental work done and the left side of my face is basically still numb. But we're pushing through it and we got some football here to play. And speaking of dental work, we just got drilled by the San Jose Industrials last week. 32 to 31. That game was an absolute heartbreaker because the Industrials went for two to take the lead rather than kicking an extra point and tying it and sending the game into overtime. So some steel cojones from the coach there and they ended up pulling out the victory. So still losing sleep over that. Not going to lie. But Ooh. three and seven here. And, uh, you know, our season, if we win out, we might make the playoffs at 10 and seven. But even so, that wouldn't be a guaranteed. I'm convinced this team is cursed, man. Like we have just lost in the craziest fashion. And even some of the games that we have won, the three of them, like they have not been easy. And this is a good squad, so I'm still racking my brain trying to figure it out. But look, it's a bounce back today, taking on the Albany Argonauts in the NFC East. Fourth best team in the SFL record-wise. And they got subscriber QB Craig Ray at the helm. And also subscriber running back superstar X-Factor Bobby Donuts. So this should not be an easy task at all today. And, uh, you know, not setting my expectations too high. But in today's episode, we got three new subscribers joining the league today. Guys, we are up to 53 subscribers now. So if you guys would like to join the SFL, check the pinned comment down below. It's got all the info I would need to add you to the league. Make sure to join the official SFL Discord. The link is in the description. And if you would like to be a superstar or a superstar X Factor player like my man Bobby Donuts here on the Albany Argonauts, check out the channel memberships. It's only a couple bucks a month. You support me and you get lots of cool perks in there. But we got a lot to get into today, guys. Cue the intro, man. And first up here, we got two new subscribers on the Sacramento Sharks. Both defenders, too, which I love to see. And we got a new left in here, Blake Miser. So shout out at Blake the 12th man down there in the comments. Six foot two, 233 pounds out of Benedictine College in Kansas. The Ravens coming from a D3 school there. He is a speed rusher with a 82 speed rushing archetype he's got 92 finesse moves so i would most definitely say that uh, he's a speed rusher absolutely also 80 power moves too so a pretty solid combination there he's got uh you know 78 hit power okay uh, 81 awareness pretty good 80 agility pretty good and he can also play a little coverage it's not showing you the coverage attributes here but i did give him a little bit of uh coverage skills as well so blake miser welcome to the league my friend and then we also got a new safety in town here, and that would be Mr. Billy Bob Joe. Love the name. A 99 rated overall name. Uh? So a shout out at Potato Cross in the comments. Long time OG uh, on this channel here. And Billy Bob Joe is a six foot four, 220 pound safety out of Washington. And he can, uh, you know, he can lay the wood. He's got, wh where's it at here? I, I know I gave him, yeah, 85 tackle. It's not showing the hit power, I don't think, but I gave him like 90. Yeah, oh, okay, there it is. 90 hit power. So he could definitely come up and make the big hit. He's got 92 speed and okay in coverage. He's more of a, uh, you know, hybrid run support kind of guy. But and nice, uh, like those jerseys too from Sacramento. First time really getting a look at the Sharks this year as up until this point, nobody has joined them. But welcome to the league. Blake Miser and Billy Bob Joe. Another new team, first time getting a look at them, that would be the Edmonton Coyotes. And welcome to the league, Mr. Timmy Winfield. So shout out at Timmy Liam21 in the comments. Really Yay! like those uniforms, man. The gray and the brown combination, that is very, very slick. And both these two teams, the Coyotes and the Sharks, are playoff contenders. So these subscribers are joining, you know, instant contending teams. But Timmy here is 6'1", 200 out of Miami of Ohio. A physical 
type of receiver and he can catch the ball with the best of a man 94 catching 94 catching traffic not the fastest guy in the world but again he's more of like throw the ball up i'm gonna come down with it i'm gonna moss somebody type of guy he's also got pretty good short route running and talking about moss and people 92 spectacular catch so if a pass gets thrown timmy's way probably gonna be a completion so welcome to the league all of our new subscribers now let's go check out this albany argonaut squad and see how we're about to get our ass beat today and as i mentioned subscriber qb at the helm here craig ray he is in the runnings for one of the yearly awards best qb or offensive player of the year i forget which one but he is playing very very good he's six foot six 236 pounds believe this is the uh justin herbert build if i'm not mistaken he can throw the ball downfield 95 throw power and also a pretty accurate son of a gun as well so craig may be carving our squad up today and guess what if he doesn't carve our squad up today this guy right here bobby donuts is gonna run through us with the superstar x factor he's got the first one free ability and all he has to do to get that activated is just rush for 10 yards which should be pretty easy about you know against us he's got the tireless runner ability the goal line back and also spin cycle and again not to harp on it but bobby is a superstar x factor because he is a channel member on this on this uh channel so that is one of the perks that goes along with it and we're gonna see that on full display today receiving core looks pretty stout as well jamar chase adam thielen and also rashid shaheed lots of talent there and also Evan Ingram, Donald Parham, too, the 6'8", one of the tallest guys in the league. So weapons, weapons everywhere. Uh, offensive line, Bernard Raymond on the left side. He's always a good, reliable option. Isaac Sayamalu, the former Eagle, he's also a good option as well. Ted Karras, pretty good center. And Zach Martin, probably the best offensive lineman in the league right now. Definitely on his way to Canton at some point. And Rob Havenstein. So their offensive line is good gonna be lots of uh lots of time for uh craig ray to throw the ball away uh and make us pay it's gonna be a day now i got the freestyles going nice ride sam williams on the defensive line to go along with the nico autry so you know pretty good joey bosa though okay he'll probably be causing us lots of problems today and junior colson and jack gibbons are the middle linebackers adafe owe is the right linebacker and they got how, how many freaking superstars are on this team man god almighty this one could be a vaseline slash tylenol game today i'm just saying trayvon diggs quinion mitchell cameron sutton so some good corners Derek forrest pretty good free safety he was on our team back in the st louis sentinels franchise and oh look another superstar jordan poyer so this team is just stacked all the way around Surprised they don't got freaking Justin Tucker as their kicker. No, they got Cade York, the former Cleveland Brown who missed a lot of kicks. Uh, maybe he'll miss some today. And also Ryan Wright putting the ball away. So this team, guys, definitely, definitely scares me. Heading on down to Olympus Field, capital of New York, and got to check out these Albany Argonauts uniforms here. So there is the Holmes, which they will be rocking today. There is the away jerseys. Nice. Uh, I like the black red and yellow combination and then also the golden fleeces so if any of you guys are familiar with jason and the argonauts probably before a lot of your guys's times but it's a i mean before my time honestly it's a very old movie but it's a pretty good one and that's where i kind of drew inspiration for the golden fleeces here but we will keep the argonauts in their homes and if you guys are fired up for this sfl series and you're loving this content please like the video subscribe to the channel help me get to 2k and without further ado, let's get on down to Olympus Field in New York and get ready for the game. J.J. Huntington, there is his season stats leading the SFL, at least in terms of running backs and touchdowns. I know that. And he is also up there in voting for Offensive Player of the Year on the NFC side. And here are your Terminators going into hostile territory in Olympus Field here to take on the Albany Argonauts. As I mentioned pregame, it is going to be a tough one. They got superstars all over the place. They got superstar X Factor Bobby Donuts, and they are, again, the fourth best team in the SFL. We will start on offense, and there is Drew Thompson having a good season. The touchdown 
interception ratio is very, very good. And back when it was Bo Nix under center, we were throwing the picks left and right, I feel like. So Drew Thompson has definitely cleaned that up, which I do, in fact, appreciate. Now, I'm going to run to the left side here. I don't like that right side is way too stacked up. And this one could be a good one from Huntington, but... Nobody was there to set a final block that we needed on a junior Colson, the middle linebacker. So it ends up being uh, just a minimal gain. And we got to find a way here, guys, to uh, to get this ground attack going. I know that we have the touchdowns. And you know what? Let me actually I'm going to audible this because we might be able to get Hopkins on a little press situation here. We're going to try. And wow, that pass is wildly inaccurate. By Drew Thompson. Already in a third and eight. Can we get Najoku on this Texas route here? That has been working like a friggin' charm as of late, but um, it could be there. It's just the interception. Wow. Okay. So, what a way to start. Deshaun Elliott, the backup safety, actually is the one to get it. And I was just talking about how we didn't have all those interceptions and what do I do on the first drive? I throw an interception. So, uh, all right. If that's how this game is going to start, I'm glad I stacked, stocked up on the Vaseline and on the Tylenol because we're going to need to end this one. Craig Ray also having a very good season. He is almost at a 3-1 to one touchdown interception ratio and almost has 2,500 yards. So that is awesome to see. So shout out to Craig Ray. And will it be him? Will it be Bobby Donuts? Or will it just be both? Who's going to be carving us up today? Oh, Roquan Smith there to get him for no gain. And Roquan Smith at one point was the SFL leader in TFLs. Not sure if he still is. But I know regardless, he is definitely, definitely up there. So nice way to start out. And I'm assuming it'll probably Bam. be Donuts again. It is. And it's Roquan Smith again. So Bobby Donuts starting out now two for negative two. And we got them in a big, big third and 11. Now, see, this is where we just have trouble stopping teams on third down. And that is right on cue. That's <laughs> right. Mm, man, dude, I swear it doesn't make any sense to me. Every time we get a team in a third or a fourth down, I mean, it could be third and, and 24. Like, they're just going to they're going to pick it up. And I don't understand it at all. Uh, Craig Ray going to send Bobby Donuts in motion and that passes off the mark. Wow. Overthrown there. And that will be an incompletion to make it second and 10. Ball is on the 24 yard line. Going to be Donuts on the run again. And oh, that time he just weaved through the blocks. That was a thing of beauty right there. His first two rushes really uh, weren't anything special. But that one was really, really nice to watch. Craig Ray now coming out I form. Going to be Donuts on the outside run. And I got jammed up with my own player. Okay. So after going negative yards on his first two carries, he is now up to four for 20. Argonauts threatening to score. I'm going to run commit up the middle. And boy, as soon as I did that, wow. Can, can someone get back to Craig Ray, please? My dude just had all day to throw. I ran commit, so that one could have really came back in and bit us in the you-know-what. This could be a 60-out jacks blitz time, though. I really, really enjoy calling that play and these, uh, you know, little third and ones here. Donuts going to get stopped, and that's Silas Vaden and Roquan Smith. I believe Silas Vaden was the first one to get a big number 56. <laughs> That was good. Let's see if we can possibly hold them to a field goal. We're going to try. Don't know if we're going to be successful, but we are going to give it the good old-fashioned college try. And oh, the pass was tipped. I believe that was Amari Taylor. It was. Just saved a touchdown there because that one was going to be money. Money. Jamar Chase was right there. And Amari Taylor got his mitts on the pigskin to force an incomplete pass. And we do, in fact... Hold them to a field goal. That is awesome. So a little bend but don't break. Damage control. Now uh, got to make sure we don't. I don't. Go out here and throw another pick so we can march down here and hopefully score a touchdown. Let's see if we can maybe get the run game going. Oh, Ramondre Stevenson. Why is he in here? I don't know, but I like it. Okay, well, 
Yeah, he's on this team because uh, the CPU traded Pat Fryermuth, um, which was odd. I don't know if I really agree with that. And they did this when I, you know, uh, I was editing like another team and uh, they did that when I was, you know, I had no say in that. So I don't really know why they did that, but he looked pretty good there. And uh, we are going to streak David Njoku. Nah, let's just go underneath to Tyler Boyd. He catches it and gets it to midfield almost. So nice start to this drive here by Tuscaloosa. We are trying to put something together here. Um... You know, we are into Argonauts territory, which is about all I can ask for. And got to always have eyes on where Jordan Poyer is at on the field. I feel like he could be an uh, interception machine today. JJ Hunt or Ty Huntington had a chance, could not haul it in. Yeah, we, we can't really afford to be dropping passes in this one, boys. Um, let's do RPO to Boyd, who actually weaves and bobs and ends up picking up six. So that's, uh, you know. Pretty good play there, I would say. And this is almost really four down territory. It's, it's probably, well, you know what? It probably is because I don't feel confident kicking a field goal from this spot on the field. But let's just hopefully not have to worry about that. And that's almost intercepted. Wow. Okay. That was uh, Cam Sutton, the corner. 53 yard field goal. I am not good at kicks. I'm, I'm just, I'm not confident in that i'm not so we are gonna go for it here i know risky risky decision but even if it was like a 30 yard field goal i would feel a whole heck of a lot more confident but if we can get a block okay oh, thank you there that was way too close for comfort we had deshaun elliott who was the recipient of that pick hot on our trails but luckily huntington was able to uh to pick that thing up yeah if you guys watch a lot of these episodes, the gameplay, not really the best kicker. I'll be the first to admit it. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing a little bit better as of late. But yeah, really glad that we picked that up. Definitely. Uh, there's the Joku. Middle of the field, which was working like a friggin' charm last episode. And just like that, we got the ball inside the 10-yard line. Now, this is where J.J. Huntington has been earning his keep uh, inside the 10-yard line. So we're going to run behind... Kyle Hughes check and ooh, Huntington gets it all the way down to the one yard line. Yeah, this is why he is in the runnings for offensive player of the year, because once we get down to this, you know, and goal type of situation, I mean, Huntington has been finding the end zone with regularity and I do like the defense here. This is very conducive to a running play. So hopefully Huntington can get in here and pick this thing up, trying to change direction. Not going to get it, unfortunately. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let this thing tick down to the end of the first. So three nothing. We got a long sustained drive going here. And you know what? I might have to dip into my old bag of tricks. And this could be why stick time. Like, you know, I, I don't. And I know I say this all the time. I don't have to. But like, you know, I, I like to be forthcoming and honest with my uh, my viewers. You guys, this is where I do kind of tend to call my own plays especially oh but that's jordan poyer out there though i don't like that all right well hopkins you want targets brother this is your chance okay can you come down with it boom slides and usually i throw that thing like you know within a millisecond of dropping back but i saw there was some coverage there with one of the linebackers so i had to cut or not, not even a linebacker really that was uh i think a lineman or it was a dafe owe so it was a linebacker but I had to let him get open. DeAndre Hopkins did find the soft spot in the zone there. And that could be a missed kick by me. I got to watch. Okay. Good thing Corey Booter is accurate enough to make up for my shortcomings. But a nice response by the Terminators. 7-3. Let's crank up that defensive intensity. There are your rushing TD leaders. We got two of them in the same game. We got J.J. Huntington with 16 and Bobby Donuts with 11, and then also Daniel Banks of the Savannah Spirits in there as well. But we got two of the best when it comes to uh, scoring, finding pay dirt. Two of the best here in this game today, and Donuts is lined up to raise left, trying to make something happen. He kind of did. I mean, that could have been a lot worse, and Donuts is able to pick up five. Came out man, but you know what? Let's audible into zone here. Jerry Hughes, I keep forgetting to... To take him out he's not supposed to be in that spot of the field 
That's supposed to be Austin Kringle. Let's actually fix that right now. We're going to fix that right now because even though Jerry Hughes kind of has played kind of well, uh, that is supposed to be a subscriber. Let's see. On the left side, we got Jacks Vaden. No. Uh, what? This is what I'm talking about. Madden just messed up my whole entire depth chart. It's supposed to be Austin Kringle on the left side, and it's supposed to be Aiden Leslie on the right side. So I don't know. What the heck they got going on there? And it's supposed to be also Jaden Taylor returning kicks. So we got to also make that fix as well. And Madden, AI, CPU, quit messing with my depth chart, please. <laughs> All right, now we're primed and ready to go. That is a little bit better. Will that even make a difference? I have no idea, but definitely want to get as much uh, screen time as we can from the subscribers. Nobody there to guard Jamar Chase. Can't be leaving that guy wide open, man. As he said, quote, he is always, always open, or I believe he had some expletives in there when he said it, but he is. I mean, he's one of the best for a reason. So got to make sure we always know where he's at on the field at all times. First to 10 here, they are into our territory. Craig Ray going to send Jamar Chase in motion. Going to be a play fake. Oh, it's Jaden Taylor with the timely interception. Second on the season for my man. And that one was huge. Oh, that's a thing of beauty right there. We really haven't had too many picks this year. He was looking for Rashid Shahid. Jaden Taylor just jumped in front of that route. And that is awesome. We got to make sure that we pay that off with some points here. My man made just an amazing play. We cannot let it be off or not. We are almost really... Uh, we're close to being in field goal range. So let's please make sure that we capitalize. We'll start things off on the ground here with Huntington trying to look for blockers. He does plow forward for a gain of five, which actually isn't the worst thing in the world. Here on third and five, I think the mesh spot is a good idea. The coach is also calling it as well. This is a spot where uh, Najoku can be a pretty good target for us. We'll have J.J. Huntington block as well, and it's going to be Najoku, but it was good coverage there. Uh, we had somebody in the vicinity, and it bounced off their helmet, so I'm going for it, man. Look, we're 3-7 and seven on the season, okay? Something has got to give. I'm going to go for it. DeAndre Hopkins can usually get open on this drag. If we don't get it, then I'll just be the dumbest coach of all time, and Hopkins does get it. Now, I normally wouldn't do that, like, but I mean, like I said, man, like we something's got to change around here. We got it. We got to change up something. We just had a great interception chance to go up on one of the better teams in the SFL. Got to take some gambles. We gambled on that one. And luckily for us, it did pay off. Huntington going to get it. And uh, hey, he's running. He's running with purpose today. This team is fired up, picking up a gain of eight. We got this thing all the way down to the 30. TE attack. No, not going to do it right now, at least. This is going to be a little RPO shot here to Tyler Boyd. Let's see. Yep. That one should be easy money. And the blocking is good, too. Boyd going to get uh, pushed out of bounds there by Cameron Sutton, a corner. But not before he did pick up the first down and get this all the way down to the 21. Coach is saying shallow cross again. I mean, that's that same play that we just ran to uh to d hop uh to get that first down it worked then can it work now it should oh d hop look he's still going change of direction he can't be stopped okay deandre see see i'm gonna give you some chances man i'm gonna give you some targets you just gotta make sure that you hold up your end of the bargain and pick those puppies up play action roll out here on second and goal this could be d hop again although Oh, we're going to give it to Huntington. Come on, Huntington. Come on, power forward. Yeah, I saw Jordan Poyer up there on the right corner, which is where I would, you know, have been leading D-Hop. And again, that just scares the ever-living daylights out of me throwing towards Jordan Poyer. He's a very, very good player. So we're just going to hope that this, uh, this mesh spot works to perfection here. And hopefully we can pick this up. Najoku's got it, and he's in. Okay. So, about to go up 14, hopefully, <laughs> with my kicking abilities, 14 to 3, and we're playing some good football. Still three and a half to go till uh, halftime. 
That one's a little better from Booter. Our defense is playing good, though. Big pick there by Jaden Taylor. Let's keep up the intensity until we get to the halftime locker room. See how Bobby Donuts and the boys respond. He has had some good runs. Uh, you know, it's not not anything to do with him while they're why they're down on the scoreboard. Really, it's just been our defense playing good. I know, crazy, right? It's, it's amazing what you can accomplish with good defense. And we, I don't know what that was. We had a chance to sack Craig Ray there, but it was still good pressure, and we do force the throw away. So RDBs, that's subscriber. Safety Brandon Moore there, number 31. RDBs are playing really good football. They're locked in for this one. Still got a lot of time, though, so got to make sure we, you know, keep up the intensity. But initial observation, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Can we get back to Ray again? Nope. That time, it's a wide open Evan Ingram. And, you know, they're going to do that. This team is good. They are going to... We're not going to hold them to three points, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, they are going to put up points on us. It's really only a matter of time. But having that lead, you know, is really good because that will allow us to uh, really kind of put the game in our hands, play the game on our terms. Now, Albany does get the ball after halftime, which is something to note. But right now, at least, we're playing pretty good football. Second and six, ball is on the 39 here. Single back formation for Craig Ray, and it is going to be Donuts. Uh-oh, he could be off. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. Like I said, Donuts is a really, really good player. And on that drive or that play there, he was eating. Stop it. Get some help. Uh, Donuts does have his X Factor on, though, which is very, very scary. Roquan Smith trying to get back there to Ray. We're putting pressure on him. Boom, down goes Ray. It is Austin Kringle. Number 51, that is amazing, man. So happy to call his name. Austin Kringle gets some good pressure. We also had Roquan Smith helping out in there as well. Not going to call a timeout, though, quite yet. Now, if we stop him for, you know, no gain or something negative here or an incompletion, then I probably will. And that's Evan Ingram. I mean, maybe they'll call a timeout. They are not. We're going to call a timeout. And because, again, want to try to put something up before halftime. 14 to 3 lead is not really that much. It is 11. If you guys can do the math on that one, I had to think for a second. I know, <laughs> but it's 11 and they get the ball starting out. So don't want to let them double dip. You know, definitely not. So hopefully we could play some inspired football here on third down. Maybe Austin Kringle can get back there on Ray again. Nope. Let him score. That's fine. It's okay. Uh, it was going to happen. It was bound to happen anyways. So that's good because we now have over a minute and two timeouts. That was a dart, too, from Craig Ray. Wow, he was able to find Rashid Shahid. And now we really, really got to put up some points <laughs> before halftime. Uh, because if that drive is any indication of how Albany's going to play from here on out, buckle up. And it could be a tough one. I'm going to send D-Hop. Single high safety. It is Jordan Poyer. Um, this will probably be, though, uh, Najoku. That's going to be picked, isn't it? It sure is. Why did I throw that, man? Oh, there was no need to throw that at all. I knew that it was. Oh, man. All right. That was 100% on me. That one was 100% on me. No matter how you crack it. That was just me thinking that Najoku could win, which he typically does, but should have never thrown that. So annoying, man. I suck. And uh, now we just got to hold them to a field goal. And now we got to be extra, extra careful because Bobby Donuts is out here running routes. Where's Ray going to go? Give me some cookies. It's good enough coverage there. Wasn't an interception. And they're actually going to punt. Now, I may just want to get this thing into halftime. <laughs> Um, maybe we try like to get D hop on single coverage or something. Um, but I, I, am eyeing that scoreboard and I really want to score, but also don't want to do anything dumb. So 14, 10 hasn't been the prettiest, but we have had some really, really good moments, especially on defense. And now that we have the defense playing 
inspired football, we have to make sure that the offense can help them out. And huh? let's look at Chicago Bears versus Chicago Bears with no stats. Actually, no. JK, let's not. All right, D, I'll give you big kudos for what you were able to do in the first half and just need you to to kind of keep it. Ooh, that could have been an interception, but it's instead a monster gain from Ingram. I believe that was Marcus May there and just did not put his hands up. Brandon Moore able to get the stop, but like if you take a look at this, we right there, I know you probably couldn't see it really too much. Not going to go to replay either, but like we had a chance, man. We had a chance. Uh, we were trying to jump the route and just didn't happen. And that was a monster, monster pickup by Albany. And there's Ingram again, who's apparently going to be a problem today. Five catches for 95 yards. And I mean, within two plays, they already got it almost uh, down to the red zone. It's going to be a outside run to Bobby. And we're there with Jaden Taylor. He's making picks. He's making TFLs, playing inspired football. Him and Jax Vaden, nice defensive play there. All right, I like what I'm seeing here. Let's uh, guess pass. Not going to shade or anything. It's going to be ooh, a play fake to Donuts. And wow, nice one there for Craig Ray. He finds Jamar Chase. And the Argonauts are uh, threatening to score here. Unless we can do something big, which I'm not saying that we couldn't. We we have at times today. But this is just a dangerous territory for us. Roquan Smith, though, not allowing Bobby Donuts to get anything going. It's going to be second and goal from the six. I'm sending heat. It's about all I can figure that will help. And it's not going to help as Adam Thielen Catches the touchdown, and the Argonauts do, in fact, take the lead. So uh, what is that? Uh, it's 14 unanswered from, from Albany. And we're going to have to go back to what worked offensively in the first half and not throw any interceptions because now we are playing from behind. Second and short, you know, that allows us to hopefully get something going on the ground, which we really, really need. Can't be throwing 50-plus passes with uh, Drew Thompson every game. That's... Just not going to work. And the full blitz. Everybody blitzed there from the Argonauts. That was heck of an effort by them. And that will make it third and two. Coach is saying RPO again. And if it's not there, it'll just be a straight run up the gut. And unfortunately, it's Jordan Poyer there on coverage, which I'm not happy about. See what he does that. Oh, what a block from D Hop! What a block from D Hop! Oh, I thought that was gonna be intercepted, but what a block from D Hop! He just completely took Jordan Poyer out of that play. And had he not, oh buddy, that could have been a house call, but heck of an effort there by D Hop. That is how you run an RPO with a tremendous success. I love to see it. DeAndre Hopkins up the seam. If not, we got Najoku on his route that usually works pretty well. There it is. I was looking D-Hop's way, but Najoku was our safety blanket. Drew Thompson now over 200 yards for the game. Also has two TDs, but also has two picks as well. If running behind Kyle Yu's check is a good call. I mean, usually you would think that it was. There's some space. Okay. Huntington going to pick up a first down as a matter of fact. And we got this ball down to the nine yard line. So I like what I'm seeing here from the boys. Coach is saying to do a little PA rollout. Jordan Poyer is up there though. So that might not be the best thing to do. We do got Huntington as our safety blanket, which uh, we'll just throw it away. Ah, oh, man, might have had a shot, point, shot for D-Hop, but not going to take a risk in that situation. RPO again, coach is calling it. I like to rock with coach suggestions as much as possible. And I also like that Jordan Poyer is not there on that side. So maybe with some good blocking here, Boyd can get it. The blocking is there and Boyd does in fact get it. So back and forth ball game here in Albany. We do reclaim the lead. For how long though, that is, you know, to be determined, but we are gonna go up hopefully by four, assuming that uh, I drill this extra point. That should be great from Booter. So now the Argonauts would have to score a touchdown to take the lead. Defense kind of took a step back on that last drive. So need them to rebound and get back to that form they were in in the first and the second quarter. How will the Argonauts respond on this drive? Hopefully not good. And maybe we can see another uh, interception from one of our subscribers. Not going to be an interception. 
just TJ Edwards getting in the backfield. And for the most part, I would say, not sure what his stats are, not going to go check, you know, as of right now. But for the most part, we have been able to kind of hold uh, Bobby Donuts in check. It's going to be Donuts again, and again, it's Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith is just there to meet runners, game in and game out. Big third and eight. Please, let's get him off the field. Got to watch Bobby Donuts as a pass catcher, maybe, on this side of the field. It is a screen, but we're there to stop him. That is Brandon Moore, who is just all over the place, man. Game in and game out. He's got like eight to ten tackles. Doesn't really have, doesn't have a pick yet, I don't think. But he did have that scoop and score on the block on the uh, blocked field goal for two points. The rare, the rare two point extra point attempt. Um, but he's all over the field, just getting you know tackles. Game in and game out. If we can go down here and score, please, Madden gods, do that for me. Then I will feel very, very confident about this one. We'll go back to the ground with Huntington. He's kind of starting to figure it out. Looking to, oh, he does. Yes. Squeeze through there, man. We had the blocks were, the blocking was kind of converging and uh, Huntington just kind of squeezed through the blocks. Second and one, we are actually going to uh, snap this here before the end of the third. Let's pick up one yard. Please, Huntington. Oh, popped. Oh my God, he just got popped there by Junior Colson. That'll make it third and one. Gotta pick it up, man. It's a must convert situation. 21-17, we're looking to put a bow on this one. Go down here, take a bunch of time off the clock, and it's all gonna probably be determined by this next play coming up. And you know what? I'm going screen, or do I audible into, yeah, maybe I audible to an inside zone. I mean, screen could work, but all we got to do is just pick up one yard, man. I'm going to double team. Can I double team the nose tackle? It's not letting me. Oh, well, we're rocking with it. Come on. Get out of my way. God, dude. My own offensive lineman just would not get out of my way. They wouldn't. And I... You know what? Just like earlier, man. Just like earlier. I got to go for this. We are... We're playing for the victory, man. This season has not gone how uh you know we had hoped i'm actually gonna flip the play to to run to this side there's a little bit more room over there now jordan poyer comes down too wonderful um yeah we're just gonna go for it we're playing for the victory pressure coming in it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up in you can't complete a screen pass true okay well I don't know what to say about that, but I, I don't regret the situation. I don't because we're, we're playing for the win. Like we need to pick up wins here and we got to uh, be aggressive. We can't just play conservative and let teams score on us. And Bobby Donuts is probably about to do that. If they do score here a touchdown, then we'll have plenty of time to go down and respond. But like that's that's just that's my luck. Like I couldn't complete a screen pass. That's all I needed was to complete a screen pass, and I couldn't do it. I mean, how? It's like the easiest pass in the world to convert, and I had a chance on Bobby Donuts, and I just missed him. Man, oh man, dude, it's the same freaking thing, episode in and episode out. Just, uh, just can't have nice things on this series, I guess. That's all right, though. I'm keeping a positive outlook on things. Uh, don't know if I should, but... You know, uh, hopefully we can hold him to a field goal, maybe, or not. Or it's just going to be Jamar Chase catching the pass for six yards. How about a uh, another timely interception? That would be amazing. This, though, will probably be a Bobby Donuts run. At least you would think. Craig Ray coming out single back, and it is going to be a Donuts outside run, but we are there to stop him with uh, TJ Edwards. This is a, the biggest third down of the entire freaking game right here. Come on, Terminators. I believe in you. Please, please, let's get them off of the field. That's all I'm asking. I don't know how that wasn't a touchdown uh, from Jamar Chase. He came back to the ball, and I feel like the, you know, the ball did cross the plane, but I guess not. But, you know, I mean, that really just delays the inevitable, probably. I may even run commit. Um, no, not going to run commit. Good thing I didn't either. And doesn't matter because it's a touchdown from Evan Ingram. So 
Got to go down here and score. I still can't believe I couldn't pick up that freaking petty screen pass. Maybe get a block kick here with James Bradbury. That would be awesome. Not going to get the animation. We got some work to do, boys. Got to roll up our sleeves and uh, don't want to let this one slip through our grasp. Five and a half minutes to go. Can we do it? That is the question. Field goal will tie, but we want to take the lead. DeAndre Hopkins, who has had a really big impact in this game, kind of got stopped there by Jordan Poyer. He's, you know, amazing play recognition from him. He's always where he needs to be. And, uh, you know, I don't like it. So second and six, can we maybe get Najoku open on this route? Maybe we just look for Tyler Boyd underneath. Uh, yeah, Tyler Boyd underneath. That's the move. Going to pick up a first down and get the ball to the 34. There's coach calling that TE angle. So I am probably going to look for Najoku on this one. I did throw a pick earlier on this type of play. So if worst case scenario, we do got Hayden Hurst there. Um, yeah, we're just going to go to Hayden because, oh, please don't fumble it. Thank God. Nice pickup of nine, making it second and one. And maybe that's for the best because we kind of got to like play good clock management here. Four minutes to go. If we play our cards right, like we could make it so the Argonauts have to score a touchdown with really not that much time left. So that is the ideal situation. Hopefully Huntington can pick this up. He, God, thought he was going to have a much bigger hole there. He does pick it up and that will take it to the 45. Coach is saying TE angle again. Who am I to argue with coach? Who is me? Who am I to argue with myself? Now, I, I would like to get David open on this play, but again, just like last time, Hayden Hurst is there if we need him, but this time that... Oh my God, dude. Just don't even believe it, man. I just don't believe it. We're gonna lose this game. And what do I gotta do what do I have to do to get a freaking win on this series? Like, I just don't. It's, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm st still fun. I'm having a grand time. I love losing. But, like, I've, I've never, since Madden 23, which is when I first started making YouTube content, I have never had this much trouble with a team on Madden, ever. Like, I, you know, I, I've never been, like, you know, an all-star, just wonderful Madden player. But I've never, never had this much trouble with a team. And I just don't really understand it necessarily. Now, this is big. If we can hold them to a field goal here, which we, we have to do that. We have to. They score a touchdown here. It's pretty much over. Um, holding them to a field goal, though, we would have a chance to go down and score a game-winning touchdown, which I know is like, it's very hard for us to do things like that. But that is pretty much our only chance of winning this thing here and uh i'm half tempted you know what i'm probably gonna i'm gonna run commit up the middle good thing i did or does it even matter donuts getting it to the one yard line i'm not gonna call a timeout yet i am gonna go all in 60 out jack splits and probably run commit again here too if they pass they pass whatever if they pass they pass i don't care let's we'll see if they do in fact pass they will, they will. Come on, please get to Ray. Thank you. Now just kick a field goal, guys, please. Just kick a field goal. That's all I'm asking. Are they going to go for it or kick a field goal? They're going to freaking go for it. That is crazy indeed. Um, Boy, I'm not going to run commit here, although I should, but I'm not. And Bobby Donut scores. Okay. Well, there you go. That is how this one is going to finish. I mean, probably, like, yeah. So, I mean, we'll have, we would have to score a touchdown, get an onside kick, blase, blase, blase. Same thing every freaking episode. And we're going to fall to 3-8. and eight. But there were some good things to like in this game. Absolutely. But when are we going to get a freaking win? 21-31, another week in the SFL, another loss from the Tuscaloosa Terminators. And they, I mean, that effectively ends our season. It was pretty much over anyways. But like, you know, there was the, you know, mathematically we weren't uh, eliminated. We could have gone, could have ran the tables and finished 10-7. and seven. But now if we ran the tables, we'd finish 9-8. and eight. And I guess we're still not mathematically out of it. But I mean, 
come on, it's it's like it's over basically. But yeah, just searching for that elusive win and don't know when it's gonna come. I believe next week we take on the North Carolina Flyers and they are worse than us. So like, God help my soul if we lose to that game. Drew Thompson, four picks. I I threw one in garbage time, just trying to take hail mary shots. So really three, but four. Um, not a great game for him. Three touchdowns was good. 231 through the air and uh, I mean Craig Ray 192 so not really a whole lot of yardage but three touchdowns to only one pick and Bobby Donuts did start to put it together towards the end there 20 for 106 averaging 5.3 yards per carry and also a touchdown as well and uh, JJ Huntington had a lot of carries and not a lot of yards to show for it going 15 for 50 Jamar Chase played good Evan Ingram was the man uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyler Boyd, and J.J. Huntington had four catches for 54. And Ty Huntington didn't really do a whole lot like he normally does, only going two for 34. Bobby Donuts also had two catches for eight yards in there as well. Defensively, though, there were some things to like in this game. So Brandon Moore had five tackles and a pass deflection. Uh, J.J. Huntington had two, two tackles from two picks. So you don't want to see... Never want to see offensive players on the defensive stat sheet. That much is for sure. But Jaden Taylor had a good game. He had uh, seven tackles, a TFL, and an interception. So a stat sheet stuffer. Amari Taylor had three tackles. He had a chance for a pick earlier in this game that really could have, uh, I believe, sealed it for us, but couldn't get it. Austin Kringle had a sack, a TFL. That is good to see. TJ Huntington had three total tackles. And uh, Aiden Leslie, I thought he had a sack. I guess not. He had a uh, just one tackle. Um, Jax Vaden had uh, two tackles and a TFL. And Silas Vaden had two TFLs as well. So nice to see it. And let's go check out the rest of the subscriber stats here in week 12. Akron Summits pick up a nice win against the Louisville Fighters, winning 28 to 21. And quarterback Dragon Zetron had a very good game, 224 yards through the air and also two touchdowns as well, out dueling Justin Herbert. And it looks like uh, we'll check on his rushing stats as well. He had three for nine. And he was able to get his tight end, Michael Mayer, which is funny. Michael Mayer is one of my tight ends on my Akron Summits franchise, my other series. Here he is on the Summits again. But nice win by Dragon Zetron and the Summits. Thunderbirds pick up a win against the Milwaukee Motors, who I believe have only won one game this entire season. So there are other teams out there worse than us, guys. We're not the worst. And we actually play one next week that's uh, worse than us, too. But Jordan Baker had a okay game. I mean, nothing crazy. He got the W, but 181 yards and a touchdown. And he also had three carries for 19 yards as the T-Birds pick up a nice, nice win. Ooh, the Grand Rapids Lightning beat the Boulder Rockies, one of the best teams here in the SFL. We had a subscriber quarterback duel here. Lucas Thomas went for 234, two touchdowns and a pick. And Lucas Spicer went for 254, one touchdown and one interception. Lucas Thomas always scrambling out there. He had seven rush attempts for 40 yards. But Lucas Th Lucas Spicer also had... Oh, I just realized two Lucases, by the way. It's pretty interesting, I guess. But Lucas did go eight for 27 and had a touchdown on the ground as well. And then we got a couple subscriber receivers out here. Austin Lucas. So another Lucas. Uh, three Lucases. Five for 68. And Floyd Butler, five for 56. But a nice convincing win here by the Grand Rapids Lightning. St. Louis Sentinels pounded the Fort Worth Rough Riders. I mean, two score wins, so I guess not pounded. But Ashton Saber had a clean game, if nothing else. He had 195. No touchdowns, no picks. But I guess maybe it was the rushing game. He had 10 for 39. Yeah, Cordero Patterson and Anthony Gibson combined for three touchdowns. So... Nice win as well by the St. Louis Sentinels. Montana Mountain Lions beat the North Carolina Flyers, who is in our division. We play them next week, and they have a worse record than we do. So come on, man. Got to win this next game. Alex Thompson went for 264, one touchdown. Oh, and it'll be a, a brother versus brother uh, subscriber match. So that should be fun and uh, exciting to look forward to. Alex Thompson also had three uh, attempts for 25 yards as well. And then we got a couple uh, receivers here for the Mountain Lions. Christian Bangle went for five for 82. And Gavin Goat, three for 33, but a big touchdown. 
as the Mountain Lions get a very nice win over the NC Flyers. Silverbacks take a one score loss here to the Memphis Suns. Never like to see it. CJ Stroud played out of his mind with over 350, but uh, Kyrie Brooks here had a, again, a clean game. Uh, 136, two touchdowns, no picks, but the yardage, you know, just not a lot of yardage and uh, did not make any rush attempts either. So, you know, just not a whole lot of offense here from the Silverbacks as they do take a loss here to the Memphis Suns. Portland Destroyers eke out a one point victory against the Las Vegas Jacks, who we play after the Flyers, and they also have a worse record than us. So two game win streak coming up here for us you know I, I sure hope so but Dominic Young who has been playing lights out didn't really play that well only 104 yards one touchdown and a pick Chase Kaiser had 226 no touchdowns and two picks so yeah just like not a lot of offense there's Pat Fryer move who uh yeah like I said he used to be on our team and Alexander Kleblek only one catch for 13 yards but the Destroyers do get a very very close one point victory. San Jose Industrials, who just beat us, also beat the Dakota Pronghorns. And we got some uh, subscribers to highlight here in the rushing game. New, one of our newest uh, subscribers here, Caleb King. He went 16 for 59. So nothing really, uh, you know, too crazy there. And we also got, of course, our receiver, Easy Fuentes, who had a great game against us. Only two for 19 in this one. But, you know, his teammates did... A bulk of the work there so they did ultimately end up getting the win and then also got our subscriber corner here josh pickney had five tackles a tfl and a pass deflection as the industrials continue to put together a solid season get a nice win here over the pronghorns salem steelhawks get a two-point win over the roswell revolution we got tons of tons of subscribers here and of course cameron moore uh in our last episode i showed you he is one of the top four in voting for mvp he had 167 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. And Ian Taylor CO, the running back, is starting to put it together. 22 attempts, 87 yards, and a touchdown. So that is pretty awesome to see. Cameron Moore also added five for 21 on the ground as well. And then we had tight end Joe Uno. He went three for 38, no touchdowns, but still pretty good game and then Tyler CO the back uh three for 24 and defensively we got a few here Daniel THG had five tackles and also a TFL and then not Oreo he always piles up the TFLs man he had three tackles and two TFLs as the Steelhawks get a nice nice victory against really one of the better teams in the league the Roswell Revolution Rochester Rebels they're having a pretty good season too they just destroyed the Juno Snow Owls 31 to 17 and got to get a look at our subscriber receiver here tommy pickle he's having a very good season too so far six catches 76 yards and a touchdown as the roswell or uh, the rochester rebels rather take care of business pretty easy this week and finally the jersey shore d's eke out a close victory against the sacramento sharks who just added two subscribers in this episode here today so we got to get a look at the Receiving yards from tight end Jesse Moore. He killed it, man. Eight for 80 and also a touchdown as well. you love to see it. And then defensively, we got uh, really subscribers on both sides of the ball here. So Blake Miser, who just joined this week, had four tackles and a sack. So that is pretty good for him. And then Billy Bob Joe, four tackles and a sack as well. And a pass deflection. So both of the new subscribers each had a sack on Lamar Jackson. And then subscriber corner, Aiden Grau. He had two tackles and that's it. So another week in the books here, guys. And as far as us, my team, like I said, we play two of the worst teams in these next couple of weeks. The uh, the Flyers and the Jacks of Las Vegas. And the Flyers are two and nine or three and eight. And what are the Jacks? The Las Vegas Jacks, they're not doing very good either. Yeah, so we literally play uh, the second worst and the third worst team in the SFL. Only four teams worse than us, but I should say at least <laughs> there's four teams worse than us. Look at the motors, man. Milwaukee Motors, only one win and 10 losses. So it could be worse, guys. And we still got a little bit of season left to hopefully stack up some wins. And if nothing else, just give us some motivation for next season. But 
that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.